Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. I hope you guys are having a great Saturday afternoon. The weather here is incredible. I mean, this is literally the perfect weather. It's about 75 degrees. There's a breeze that's blowing. I am actually loving life. And um, what we're going to be doing right now, seven days from today, from right now, I will be in an RV with my beautiful bride, Tracy, uh, my son, of course, Michael, his uh, future wife, uh, Dam Gina, along with Brian Green, and uh, a whole bunch of tools. And we're actually going to Dallas to help out my buddy, Stuart Morrison, Stuart, who just got um, back home from the hospital and is not doing well at all. Um, we're going to be going down there. We're going to be giving back and trying to uh, make things more comfortable for Stuart and for his mother and stuff. And I hope that you guys will follow along on the journey. Let me say thank you to everybody who has donated and been part of helping this happen. I appreciate you guys solely. And so what we're gonna be doing, you, what you'll see here, uh, let, let me flip cameras here real quick. What you see here is, for you Eagle fans, you don't know what this is. You don't know what this is, but this is one of our Hall of Fame greats, the first man to ever have five Super Bowl rings, sitting there behind all five of the Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl trophies. And that is a print that is actually carved into wood with my inventables. And that's one of many pieces that I'm going to be giving away. Over here, we have one of the greatest plays in the history of football, the Hail Mary. My man, Drew Pearson, Hall of Famer, actually making that catch and saving the Dallas Cowboys against the Minnesota Vikings. So what we're going to be doing is... We're going to be doing a live stream every day, and every day that we do a live stream, we will do a drawing for one of these pieces. Everybody who has donated to the GoFundMe, okay, and everybody who does a super chat between now and then will be entered, and it will be only those people. We have several different ones. We have Tom Landry um, and uh, Roger Staubach. We have Dak Prescott with his finger pointing to the sky, as well as we're going to come up with some other ones. So these are pieces that we will only be making to give away. And I can dare say that there's not another piece like this one anywhere in the world. So I want to do that as my gift to help support those who are supporting the cause. So as I'm got pieces up in the workshop right now that are carving, my question is, and one of the things that keeps me up and has me worried right now for the Dallas Cowboys is our linebacking core. This is where I worry because we don't have a lot of depth and we don't have a lot of experience. You can look and say, man, you know, Micah Parsons, he is an absolute beast. You know, five MVP votes last year, you look for him to be even better than he was. Beyond that, of course, we have Leighton Van Der Esch, Leighton Van Der Esch, and Leighton Van Der Esch, who has had some injury history, who really actually started to play well in the second half of last season, and actually one of the reasons why the Cowboys defense was playing as well as it was, was because of um, Leighton Van Der Esch. Um, we had Keanu O'Neill playing the weak side linebacker and having to cover Keanu O'Neill didn't like being a linebacker he's actually gone and he is actually going back to safety and who we have for weak side linebacker currently penciled in as a starter is Devonte bold um don't know if that's going to be the case if he will be the starter and stuff but Devonte bowl a uh, player that's been in the league since 2016 former tampa bay buccaneer has a total of i believe 39 tackles not a lot of experience as we continue to go down the charts here, backing up Micah Parsons is Drabil Cox. Now, understand, you have Micah Parsons can be the wild card who could play just about anything. We saw him literally catching passes yesterday. Um, and you want to be able to use him in a multitude of areas. Drabil Cox 
is the backup for him. Now, Jabril Cox, you know, fourth round draft pick, but highly touted out of North Dakota State. He's six foot three, about 235 pounds, and can play well in the coverage role. But the Cowboys may be putting a little too much stock in him. Now, here's the thing. I think he can be really, really good. But what we're looking at as far as experience goes is brother man's got two tackles in the NFL. He got injured, had an ACL injury, and he's coming back from that. The surgery went well. He should be fine to go into training camp. But the problem for the Cowboys defense is we don't have a lot of experience. We don't have a lot of depth, which is one of the reasons why Anthony Barr makes sense for the Dallas Cowboys. But as of yet, it's past June 1st. We have the additional funds. We have about $22.5 million to work with. The Cowboys have yet to spend any money bringing in anybody else. Now, it's still a little bit early. There's still time to get these guys. There's going to be other guys that are going to be out there that are a possibility. But as we go through the whole linebacking core, we have Devin Harper backing up Leighton Van Der Esch, and then behind him, Damon Clark, who... I think ultimately could be a great linebacker for us, but we're talking about a guy who had his back fused a few months ago, and he may play maybe in the middle of the season, maybe a red shirt season, but I'm not going to put any eggs in that basket. If we get him on the field, hey, you're playing with house money, but don't plan on him. Um, behind on the weak side linebacker, we have Devontae Bold. Then Luke Gifford, you know, Luke Gifford is a great special teams guy. And, you know, hopefully he can play well at linebacker, but we just don't know. And then Aaron Hansford. So here's the thing with Jabril Cox. Jabril Cox, like I said, has been highly touted. He is a guy who has got the right size. He's got the speed. He's got the strength and stuff. But we still have to understand that he is basically a red-shirted rookie. And as we go through, I mean, if we're looking for highlights, this is the highlight that we have right now, which is not a bad one. Not a bad one at all because, of course, I love seeing Danny Dimes go down. Here is Jones going to take oh, it the and Didn't he tackles it. him, keeping him from getting out of the end zone. Let's look at that one more time. Here is. Here is. And here's what I like. Here's what I like. He understands, and this I've talked about this so many times because when we look at 2020, how dysfunctional our defense was, they did not have fundamentals. And by fundamentals, it's the basic things of understanding. I've said this a million times. You're probably sick of it. But if you go out skeet shooting with a shotgun, you do not aim for the target. You aim for where the target's going to be. And too many times we saw guys um, in 2020, instead of going out here, he's going for the mesh point. He is looking to say, this is where I'm going to catch him. Guys would go here to where the guy is. The problem with that is he ain't going to be there that long. You have to understand the shortest distance between two routes is a straight line. And if you are coming here to get him, what's going to happen is you're going to start out here and you're going to realize, oh, he's out here. You're going to do what's known as a banana. You're going to be curving trying to follow him here. Problem is that distance is now longer. Jabril Cox recognizes I've got to cut him off before he gets in the end zone and goes flat. <coughs> excuse me. Flat across. So let's go on. Jones gonna Look at that. Straight line. Take it and Boom. And I'm not just it. trying to deliver a blow. I'm trying to get my arms around him and maybe knock the football out and tackle him. I've seen so many guys in 2020 that, and, and it, it bothers me and it makes me worry about head trauma. That instead of understanding the fundamental, excuse me, I don't know if I got hay fever or not. Maybe I'm growing into it as I'm getting older. But not understanding the fundamentals of tackling. 
It's a lost art. They would just say, let me just run into them as hard as I can and be like a bowling ball and just knock them over. It's not how you do it. What you do is, <coughs> excuse me, what you do is you get your head across his body. You use your shoulder and your arms and you basically make a soft spot to wrap around. And that's what he's trying to do as he gets there. He's trying to get his head across the body. He's trying to use this shoulder and wrap those arms with him. And boom. Get those arms on him and squeeze and, and take him down. Didn't get it. And stops him from getting in the end zone. That's textbook technique. So yes, I look for Jabril Cox to be able to be that breakout player. And we have a couple of guys that they're saying, of course, that could be a breakout player. But we, in fact, are going to need him to be a breakout player because the cupboard is kind of bare. And this is where we hope that the Dallas Cowboys recognize that this may be one of those areas that we need to go ahead and say, let's get some extra bodies out here. Let's sign a free agent or two to help out the situation because I think that we have a great starting front seven. I think we've got some great competition on the defensive line. I feel great about where we are with safeties and the cornerbacks are good enough. And the thing about this is, especially when people talk about, you know, Diggs, you know, can he do what he did last year and things like that? More than likely, he's not going to get 11 interceptions. Um, I will say Richard Sherman who had eight interceptions one season, backed it up with eight the next year. A lot of that is going to depend on how the defensive front plays. Because all of these pieces, as much as we want to break it down and say, you know, the cornerback sucks and this, that, and the other, you have to understand that, like the old saying, that the ankle bone's connected to the shin bone and the shin bone's connected to the knee bone and the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone, all of these things are connected when you build a defense. If the defensive front can stop the run and make a team one-dimensional, if the defensive front can get to the quarterback in two and a half seconds and maintain their rush integrity, if the defense can put a little extra pressure on the quarterback, you're going to get a quarterback who's trying to throw before he's ready. You're going to get a quarterback who's trying to throw where he's got people in front of him and he can't have a clear sight of view. You're going to have a quarterback who's about to shit his pants that is going to try and get rid of the football. And all of these things lead to turnovers and takeaways. And that's where you have to understand that as much as people want to say, oh, he's garbage or this quarterback didn't do that. You have to understand all of those things are a product of everything that's around you. And so with that being said, that's all I have for you right now. I'm going to be back later on this evening. I'm going to do a little live stream where we will be giving away another one of these pieces. We gave away one last night. In fact, while I'm taking a break from this, I've got to actually go work on these because I'm going to make a bunch of them and give them away because we got to start looking out for our fellow man. And I will have news on Stuart later on and some things that he wants me to say to you guys. And, um, yeah, we'll be talking to you guys later. Hope you're having a great weekend, and I will see you guys later. That is, if I can get the cursor over to the button.